Atlas, an MMO on the grandest scale with 700 unique islands, the potential to be the largest MMO ever built. Nope, pretty much all lies. Everyone says I'm too negative in my videos, so I'm gonna randomly just throw in shit for comedic relief this time. You f happy snowflake? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's too much work to find a bunch of legitimately funny clips. It's just gonna be the dancing crabs once in a while to keep the moods protected for those delicate flowers whom are watching. So anyways, Atlas made insane claims, but even before the day one drop, it had repeatedly set itself up poorly. The game got delayed multiple times, which in and of itself is not usually a concern, but they had a literal countdown clock multiple times that would tick to zero and then nothing. They would release some statement and delay again and again. The likely cause is because they were completely overloaded. Somehow Atlas has become a phenomenon with quite literally zero marketing. Most major Twitch streamers have been waiting for it avidly. Hundreds of thousands of gamers poised with their fingers over the button set to purchase and that's an impressive feat. How they managed it though is really, really a sad thing to dissect. The interest came from grand, unrealistic, and untrue claims of a 40,000 population globe server with hundreds of unique islands and a world larger than almost any before it. But when the game finally dropped, players started to see the Freeport areas and the individual server grid segments capped at a population of 150. And onboarding new players could not happen while the entry zones themselves remained fully populated. If the entire map were evenly populated with 150 in all zones, the number would still not even reach 40,000. And to expect that all remote areas of a globe would remain evenly and fully populated is absurd, resulting in a game world that probably would have only a few thousand players in it maximum, at best, not even close to 40,000. Now, they are making changes to this in some capacity, instancing multiple player entry areas, expanding the zones through which to enter, and there are changes rolling out constantly. But at its core, the game cannot actually be what it claims to be. This again would be little to no issue, but the player interest and anticipation for the game was and is through the roof. When the developers finally announced after, what, four or some odd delays, different ones, that the servers would finally flip to live, Steam itself crashed under the strain of all the orders. Carts were broken, payment systems were glitching out, and as players finally got their copy and installed the assets, it was pretty clear the servers were going to break too. So I want to make it clear that server instability, launch day crashes, and similar issues are not the main reason why I call this game an embarrassment. Those were, to any intelligent gamer, 100% expected and frankly an obvious guarantee. The problem really became more clear when it was discovered that by plugging a controller into the game, scrolling past the bottom exit button to an invisible marker and selecting it, players could literally pull up the actual functional arc menu. In that menu there are references to certain map types and selecting ocean indicates that Atlas is a pseudo arc DLC that was just pushed out as its own game with moderate tweaks. The map boasts unique islands, but if you examine closer, all the islands are just spammed replications of a certain few, either just rotated on an axis, shrunk down, or blown up to be larger. Even the globe on its equator, minus the free ports, is almost an exact vertical axis flip copy paste. It won't be an issue for players who are just sailing and exploring, at least casually, because approaching different islands at different angles the first time will not be entirely recognizable, but the more you dig, the less the game holds up to any sort of scrutiny. Most of the gameplay systems themselves are exact reskins of Ark, reused assets, and as with almost all the other points I have mentioned, that isn't a bad thing in and of itself, because it was obvious a lot of the material would be reused in some way. The engine is the same, and many, many of the gameplay systems would draw from the previous past development experience of the studio, but the game is a worse version of Ark. After the company had two years to improve, fix, develop, and learn from their past title. Why and how did that happen? 
On paper, the game almost has unlimited potential. It sparks interest and jumps off the page. Even in trailers, the game holds up and builds interest, but expectation versus reality is a very harsh thing, and optimization is worse than almost any other title I have ever seen. Stories of players with 1080 Ti cards pulling 10 or 20 FPS. In their mad rush to open more onboarding locations, the starting areas in the game that you can enter now do not even have all the required resources is necessary, resulting in some players getting stuck on islands in perpetuity that they were never intended to be on for initial spawn zones, and the server can still never get even close to a 40,000 population. Any and almost all of these issues individually is explained away by the title of early access and can be pointed to as nitpicking problems with an early development title that was obviously going to be troubled at launch. But in the larger context of the game, with the blatant Control c Control v development from ARK, the parallels to this being a glorified ARK DLC that they touched up, not, not even well, like they touched it up badly and resold as a brand new game. And the absolute smoke show of pre-launch delays with poor communication, that's a big emphasis, there is little to no faith instilled within the community at large. Mass refunding has already begun. Support tickets for players with more than the allotted playtime still getting a reversal on their purchase. The game has already been called a new low in MMO release quality, and the list goes on and on. It's a meme at this point, a bait a reskin, and what appears to be a cash grab that has begun to plummet in its scores. As more reviews start rolling in, it may equalize as a lot of previous ARC fans come in and have a better impression and are also better equipped to handle this sort of thing. Something more moderate and removed from the totally annihilating hatred that it sees right now. But the outlook for this game is bleak at best. Gamers are sick of over-promising and under-delivering. If historical references hold true, which they obviously will given the actual usage of almost every ARC asset in existence with little to no adaptation, the game will have multiple paid DLCs while still in early access. Then a price hike from $30 to $60. Maybe more things to buy after, who knows. But it's all just a stretch from something that was built for and should have been a part of their original price stretching title, and is in a worse condition than that which it was based on. Despite them having an extensive history, now polishing the same assets that they're using. The argument can and will be made that either I am or other discontent gamers are entitled, ungrateful, unforgiving, and overly critical. Well, to that, I have to say... The gaming market does not need to move in a direction of worse and worse reskins, Frankenstein content that doesn't work well for years and scrapes the bottom of users' wallets despite being early access and undeserving of that type of price. It's a meritable argument that early access games are obviously going to trend towards this, but early access as a concept is starting to be abused, used as a tool to dodge accountability and product quality enforcement, a smokescreen to earn more for less, and gamers are waking up to it. Atlas is a complete and utter mess. It's a borderline sham that shamelessly reskins, reuses, and repurposes existing material, but half of it in a worse way. The truth, however, and one I'm reluctant to admit honestly, is that many players will still play it, enjoy it, and as a general rule, any open world social game with survival aspects can easily hold many, many hours of enjoyment. But for the love of God, hold off on Atlas, even if that is the only selling point that you need, it's just not ready yet. It may be days, weeks, or months, but in its current state and its launch day encompassed with that, it is a borderline scam. I have some dedicated friends who are well-versed in ARK. They are veterans of that title, so shout out to Atmospheric and Like 20 Penguins, who have been refreshing the menus, diligently exploring, building, and really carving through the content. I want to play with them, and Atlas opens up a fun opportunity, when it's at least functional, to do that. As a result, I will be exploring the game world as best I can, mostly just socializing, and if you plan to use the game for a similar purpose, it redeems a modicum of its value, but then there are a great many games better suited suited to that purpose, and in the same way Fallout 76 was and is criticized because it's fun with friends, but also an abomination, so too is Atlas, albeit without the AAA tag and the budget and Bethesda who has its name behind it.
Atlas had almost flopped before it even came out. It went through a meteoric rise from completely unknown to the number one game on Twitch with hundreds of thousands of viewers multiple times while the developers botched the communication and delayed over and over. And now, after launch, the game has solidified its position as a borderline meme, a relative joke, and under-delivering failure. For the moment, at least. I am not trying to say that the game can never be good. I want it to be good, are you kidding? A survival MMO on this scale? But its future isn't bright. Hopes are not high, and when evaluating a game, even an early access one, we need to look at what it is, not what it might someday be because we're so kind all the time and everything's rosy and peachy and yay. Atlas may very well fade from memory over the next weeks and months, a bright flash of combustion that then immediately subsides, but it sure made an impression with a lot of players, a really, really negative impression, and it really highlights the question, should titles delay for long periods of time, a practice that is widely known to cause discontent and reduce hype, or should they dodge their own release timers on their website as unexpected popularity bogs down their release, repeatedly pulling the rug out from under players to then climax with a totally broken, unplayable, and largely dysfunctional product release to conclude it all. One that also copy and pastes all the assets from a previous game in shameless, blatant fashion. Either way, the game is out now, let's see where it goes. I'll likely keep track of it on the channel with a fairly watchful eye just because of the still developing nature of it, the early access tag, and the scope and all the different grand claims in the description. But that's going to be all for today. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have a Facebook group, Discord server, gaming forums, and some more stuff, so take a look if you'd like to. I'll stop rambling though, that's enough. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice night.